Raphael, we're here at the FQXI conference talking about the physics of what happens, the uh, physics of the observer, and events is one of the critical uh, concepts that we're dealing with. Now, I know what events are, there seems to be a common enough word, but when we talk about events in the two major ways of thinking, quantum mechanics and general relativity, what do they mean? They mean very different things. In, in general relativity, um, the word event is, is very carefully defined. There's no ambiguity about its meaning. Uh, it means something quite simple, actually. It means a point. Uh, not just a point in space, but also localized in time. So um, if, uh, if I go like this, that's an event. That, that moment where I snap my finger right there, all that information together, where and when, that specifies an event. And even if I hadn't snapped my finger, you would still count that as an event. Um, and, and so the standards are not very high for something being an event in general relativity. It's just a fancy way of saying point in space and time. Uh -huh. um, now you can already see that that has, you know, probably limited use, uh, even uh, at, in, at the level of a classical theory like general relativity, we don't care about all events equally. There's a lot of empty space out there where, where nothing much happens for long periods of time. And, and so we should not take this to mean that physicists somehow ascribe great meaning to all those non-happenings. It's just a word. It gets more interesting in quantum mechanics um, because I get to make up the answer. It, 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 when people formulated uh, quantum mechanics and still today, I don't think there's, you know, there's a section in the quantum mechanics book where somebody defines the word event. Um, but, but I think that there is a sensible way of defining something interesting in quantum mechanics that we might call an event. And it's when, when a certain observation takes place, when a certain evolution takes place where we didn't know what was going to happen, um, there were probabilities perhaps for one thing or another to happen, and then we see that one of those things happened. So um, when, when, when will an atom decay? We don't know, but we sit there with a detector and it suddenly goes click. Well, that's an event, I would say. That's a nice thing to call an event. Or we don't know if the famous cat is dead or alive, and then we open the door and it's, it's dead. Well, there was an event there, it died. The event was when it died, the event was not when you observed it. Yeah, the or event the, was actually or, or, when it died because, because there were lots of other things doing, um, doing, doing some observing, or at least something as equivalent to observing even without me opening the door. But and the so point, if you have just the probability yeah. distribution curve uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the wave function, Th that's not an event. There's no that's event right. there until there's a decoherence, until one of the um, probabilities becomes uh, classical? Right, so if, if, I def if I choose to define event in this way for quantum mechanics, then for an event to take place, I have to forget about part of the quantum system. Ah. Um, otherwise, uh, this, this sudden decision, you know, never happens. The cat stays both dead or alive. Um, and, and so no event ever takes place. Things just continuously evolve in this bizarre superposition. If, on the other hand, uh, I, I take into account that in practice we never keep track of all the things that interact with macroscopic systems like light and the air and the, the warmth they emit, the heat they emit, then, then I can see that the evolution is in fact to some extent probabilistic and things can happen where I say, okay, mm. something took place, now I see that it turned out the cat is dead. Mm. Um, so, so it's a more interesting story, I would say, in, in, in quantum mechanics. So when you have these two kinds of events, one in general relativity and one in quantum mechanics, because the great uh, holy grail is to unify the two, uh, is, is there a way of thinking that you, you have to combine the, or, or correlate the events in one or the other, or that's, it's just a coincidence you're using the term event in each case, that there's no real fundamental relationship between them? Yeah, I think that uh, the word event really means different things in, gen in general relativity and in quantum mechanics. Or, to put it differently, if I started by insisting that everything that I call an event in, in general relativity should also be an event in quantum mechanics. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, then what happens? That would be really hard to arrange. 
even if I don't want to know what goes on in every space-time point, but maybe slightly more uh, fuzzy regions, I, I divide up space into little, into little cubes or something and time into little uh, intervals, I would still have to observe uh, at every place and at every you know, discrete moment of time what happens, which is hard enough, but it gets worse because I'm doing that everywhere in the universe. And so um, how do I decide which of these things is something I keep track of and which which regions or places or events are things I'm not keeping track of. I have to pick some part of the universe that I call the environment and that I don't keep track of if I want to have an event in the quantum mechanical sense. Mm -hmm. um, and by definition, if I'm going to describe the whole universe as I do in general relativity, mm -hmm. I can't drop any part of it and suddenly say, well, I'm not interested. Um, or if I do, it seems it seems somewhat random to, you know, pick which part. Mm. How do the events uh, uh, um, influence our understanding of what time is in both general relativity and quantum mechanics? Well, in general relativity, um, I think there's there's really you know, very little question about what time is. Time is some as aspect of the geometry that sort of forms the very basis of the theory. The theory is about describing how that geometry can be changed, how it, how it is shaped, what shapes it. Um, so events are occurring within that yeah, exactly. space-time that, framework. That's sort of already the framework that, you're, that, that the theory comes shipped with. On and events other, are, are, are defined by that space-time yeah, framework. So exactly. that's the relationship. Exactly. Okay, that's yeah, clear. Right. In, in quantum mechanics, uh, again, I think it's somewhat more interesting um, to, to have a clock. Well, you really have to record uh, over and over that, you know, a tick has passed, another tick has passed, another tick has passed. It's le really like making a measurement over and over and over. And, 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 and in some sense, you're recording those ticks, right? By having a, a pointer that moves uh, around the clock, uh, you're recording, and then you make another pointer that counts how many times the first pointer has already moved around. So you keep recording what has happened. And so it's really, a clock is really a sequence of measurements. Mm -hmm. Now, in practice, except for very advanced clocks, those measurements aren't even particularly quantum mechanical. But actually, our very best clocks, that's exactly what they do. Uh, they use a quantum uh, system and they, they keep measuring something about it. So, um, looking at, uh, at the overview of, the, of the, uh, the requirement to build a, uh, a quantum gravity to integrate quantum mechanics and, and relativity, if you were able to do that, and the, you're working in string theory, other people are working in different areas, a lot of conflict, but when you get to where you want to be with whatever theory, what will then events be in that theory? Will they be pretty much what they are in quantum mechanics? Or? Well, uh, I, I, con contrary to popular belief, I don't actually strictly work in string theory. Uh -huh. I, I'm interested in it to the extent that I think it's promising, which, which it is. But I think there are many things about quantum gravity that one can investigate uh, sort of in the way that physics used to be done by, by looking for patterns that are already there uh, in, in nature. And, um, and sometimes those patterns can be quite surprising. And when you find something surprising and coincidental, often that can be a hint about a deeper underlying theory. Mm. If it involves both gravity and quantum mechanics and it looks like a coincidence, well, maybe that tells us there's some other theory in which this is very natural. And uh, one, one such idea is, uh, is the whole graphic principle, the idea that there's... Um, uh, a quite limited amount of information uh, in in nature uh, that is set by by the area of surfaces surrounding regions and not not literally the volume of those. Um, that's a very counterintuitive concept. Of those, yeah, that's that's right, that's right. Now, connected with that idea, uh, we've been led to at least a, a conjecture, maybe a preliminary conclusion, that it does not make sense. Um, to describe more of the universe than what one observer can see. Uh, not necessarily you and me, uh, but what an, an imaginary, idealized observer could see, at least consistent with the laws of causality. Mm. There are places in the universe, events, if you will, from which signals can never reach us. Sure. Uh, they'd have to go faster than the speed of light. 
most likely we are not supposed to include those in a fundamental quantum theory of gravity. That would be my bet. So that's one thing it, it, I, I would guess it will tell you, that those things aren't really there, that we should describe a, a region that can in principle at least be observed, uh, and that only events in that region um, re are really fundamentally there. Moreover, once you restrict to such a region, there are uh, particles that can leave that region. Um, and those particles can help make quantum mechanical events more um, objective. They can, uh, they, they give you something that you really can't keep track of, uh, no matter what kind of observer you are. Um, and so they might help define um, the sequence of events that shape the universe as we see it, uh, some of which were probabilistic, for example, uh, the perturbations in the microwave background radiation that we see are, were shaped by probabilistic quantum effects. By ignoring things that went outside of the region that one observer can see, you can get an objective way uh, of getting those things to become events, uh, and not just simply all possible microwave radiation configurations superposed on each other.